right, this is our first interview for 2021. Jeez, we made it. Nice. We made it, but we'll see that. This is Derek again of Light Performance Enhancement here in Upland. We had done a video about a month ago um, as a series of the torso, the core, and how to work from the base, your lower body, even from the feet all up through your middle body to get the body actually healthy, strong, and injury free. So Derek, introduce yourself, see what's going on. How you guys doing? I'm Derek. Uh, like Doc said, I'm the owner of Life Performance Enhancement, a private personal training studio where I service people for fitness, sports performance, and rehabilitation. I have expertise in the spine and shoulder joint as far as rehabilitation. And like I mentioned on the show before, I was a strength conditioning coach uh, locally here at Azusa Pacific University for five years uh, before opening up uh, the LPE studio. And then I've been working as a professional in the industry for 16 years. If you guys want to go to my website, you can check me out at lpecoaching.com. You can read my full bio. Uh, and get to know me a little bit better, as well as read testimonials from a lot of coaches and uh, people in the community in the area. And I actually had to post this up to has links directly to the location, and also to you personally. Also, right. On, thank so you. let's talk about what we want. What's this? What's the syllabus today? What's going on today? Yeah, for sure. So today, what I thought I'd talk about is is just different parts of the abdominals. So we're going to talk a little bit about the external oblique, the internal oblique. Uh, this portion of our abdominal is called the transverse abdominus, and then the rectus abdominus, which is kind of the, the general way that we refer to as like a six-pack in our culture and stuff like that. So I wanted to just kind of inform you guys on different levels about each portion of the abdominals, kind of tell, tell you how if you were injured maybe, this is how you would begin a rehabilitative process, uh, some strengthening exercises, and how that correlates to our aesthetics as well. And then maybe if you're an athlete watching this, I can throw in some sports performance information as well for that. Fantastic. Let's get started. I'm going to go around the camera here. Sure, and, sure, sure. And let Derek do his thing. So the first thing we'll do, guys, today is I'm just going to sit here and just talk a little bit about your abdominals and stuff like that. The reason I'm going to choose to do that is because when I, I'm going to show you myself in different positions, but um, it's, you're not really going to be able to see activation from the muscle. And the reason that is is because when you first learn how to use muscles really throughout the whole body, is it's a neurological thing that we have in our brain. So you first have to understand, I guess you could say, Doc, like cross-wiring, where the left okay. side of our brain essentially controls the right side of our body, and the right side of our brain is what's going to control the left side of our body. So when I rehabilitate people or people need to understand how to use the external oblique, there's different positions that you put the body in that will then allow them to kind of learn how to use that muscle as isolatively as possible. Okay, so in movement, we refer to them as you know, synergism, where different muscles are performing different functions at different joints all at the same time. When, when rehabilitation or strengthening needs to take place in a particular portion of our body, you need to position the body in a way to where it's, the brain is not distracted, let's say, or it can fully concentrate on this one specific area um, to just work it in the functions and the function or functions that that particular muscle may have. Okay, Great. Yeah. Yep. So let's talk external oblique. All right, out here on the, the abdominal wall, you got your external oblique. Uh, from there, we're going to come internal, transverse, and rectus. So on the outer part here of the of the abdominal wall, we got the the external oblique. Now these guys. They, they do a lot of different things for our body, but today we're gonna to talk a little bit about stability and how they kind of work themselves, learn, how I teach people to learn to use them from the lower portion of, the, of, the, of it up the body like this, okay? Now, depending on where you need specific strengthening, there's different things that I can do with people where I actually will touch them and turn on the somasomatic nervous system, which is in the skin, and you can differentiate where they're strong or need strengthening in the one particular muscle. So how, you, how this works is you have to use your brain to first understand what it's gonna feel like to turn on the external oblique, uh, like from a static position. So even seated like this, and I will show you on my, uh, on my belly and back as well, you wanna think like you're gonna take that muscle and push it outward like this. So it's kind of like a squeezing that you will do. And again, it's kind of funky, but you try to think about the left side of your brain turning on this right side of your body. And if you have no idea and have never been taught this before, what you need to do is essentially you need to touch the muscle with your own finger or have a specialist like myself do that for you so that your brain, the central nervous system gets ignited more in that one area and it will be easier per se for your brain to understand kind of where to try to do something with a muscle on the body. So in a seated position like this, 
you can use your left hand over here and you can just kind of bring it around the body like this on the lower portion of your external oblique and then you would just try to turn it on and squeeze it and it would feel like the muscle kind of expands outward like this too. I also think Anthony it's really valuable okay. for people to understand the benefit of having great mobility in the spine and in particular the thoracic cavity of the spine. So for you guys that don't know what that means, the thoracic cavity is kind of like our middle back and it's comprised of 12 vertebrae. And we have muscles that run, the attachments, the nerves come down the spine, they shoot out the, from the vertebra, let's say, as we go down the spine. Want to show them on me? Huh? Want to show me sure, as a demo? Sure, sure, sure. I'll be the Van White. Let's see. So we'll get Doc seated, right? Just let's face this here, Doc. Doc's got a nice Hawaiian shirt on today. I like the print there. Looking good, man. So what the way the way this works, you guys, is that when when we are sending signals to our body, okay, it's coming. We're gonna come down the spine. Let's say if you're a specialist walking watching this or a professional, I'm not gonna go in great detail uh, how about the different systems, how they go down and come back up. Just generally speaking, we're gonna say that it starts in the frontal lobe and it comes our way back through the brain. We go into the into the medulla oblongata, and then we get down to the stem, and then we kind of come to this little transfer zone right here at the base of the neck and this is where your body will differentiate left side is going to shoot you here right side is going to shoot you here okay so we we were going to say with doc if we're going to try to turn on his right external oblique we're going to need to send a signal from this left guy down here and it's going to come over here cross over and let's say we want to docs docs not functioning well in the lower portion of his external oblique kind of right right above the hip rotator okay so we're going to come down in here and i'm going to say yo doc from right here in here i'm going to touch him here and I'm gonna push on him from this vertebrae. His brain's gonna send a signal right from here. It's gonna shoot it over into the muscle. So I'd be like, you know, Anthony, can you try to push your abdominal, your muscle into my finger, okay? And he would, and he's doing that right now and he's relaxing. Now the pelvis is moving a little bit, so we try to do that without pelvic movement initially in there, okay? And and that and that's and that's hard. That's very hard to do that at, in the beginning. We all want to move this and get more muscle involvement, but what you want to try to do is get isolated. When I, I work with a lot of baseball guys, right? A lot of baseball guys, a lot of golfers uh, in the area and stuff like that. The obliques are key for them. And so when I assess them, what I do is I try to get as intricate as possible and see how well their brain is wired in this muscle because athletes are expert at compensation. Okay, they're just getting it done and, and fighting and trying to win. But to protect them from injury as well as enhance performance, you have to fit, go through their body and analyze where it is that they are deficient and need improvement. So their gross movement patterns become more efficient and thus more powerful and can produce greater things like uh, force and speed or whatever it is they're trying to achieve. So we come down in here. And the, one of the things I think is great to learn about the oblique is how to start low. I personally, when I learned all this in my old body, it was very challenging for me to get down in here with my mind and learn how to push these muscles out. As we come up in here, up the oblique in here, because of my personal baseball background, I was very strong around kind of the middle of the thoracic from all the rotation that I did, you know, from five years old all, all the way up through college. So, but, but these muscles obviously were adequate, but as far as some isolative strength, you know, I thought it was there was areas in there that could have had improvement, right? And so with the baseball guys, it's very important to come through and analyze each area of that external oblique, and we'll do that in a few different ways, seated for the sake of the video. The other way is, I'll show them real quick, Doc, if you wanna. Go ahead and stand it up. So we'll lay them down on the ground. I can, I can tilt it, yeah. Lay down, lay down on the mat, Anthony. Face down or face up? Uh, face, let's go face up. So we're just going to show Doc in a couple different positions here. So we have this position here, the classic, I'll probably have you uh, bend your knees, Anthony, in there just to get the pelvis a little more neutral, and that's kind of going to be an individual thing. The other one is, is we'll roll it over onto the belly, Anthony, if you can roll it over onto the belly, we'll be in a straight-legged position, uh, and we'll bring the hands so they're underneath the forehead, in there like this. Now here, this is going to, this is going to sound a little crazy, you know what a great exercise is is when clients are injured okay is this is if you go to like 7-eleven and buy a small bag of those of ice okay and I'll put it here 
on the side of their body and I will put, position it in a way where it's kind of sem semi-lifted and I will tell them to try to move the bag of ice away from their body with the muscle. It's a great, it's a great little teaching tool. It works, it works exceptionally well. A little messy, but then you're going to end up throwing it on the injured area anyway and icing them down. A lot of times when people have oblique injuries, the front of their abdominals are very sore. They need icing, whatever. So it, it you know, works out. But it's a great teaching tool because it kind of slides and then you can push it back and, and it's a great form uh, of resistance kind of after they you've maybe strengthened them through touching. So we're down here, external oblique here. I'll be like, Doc, go ahead and fire that guy off. Doc's gonna fire that one off and release it. Should and move, should it move a lot or just move Very a slight. Bit? Okay, great question, Anthony. So these contractions from your muscles are gonna be very small. They're not gonna be big ones, not gonna be a lot of movement from the skeleton during them. Okay? So like I mentioned, you work your way up the external oblique, and then eventually you can kind of get up in here near the, up in here near the ribs and, and all this kind of stuff. So good general explanation there, Anthony. You can roll it over there. Okay. Okay. Now we got the internal oblique. So as you look at the abdominal wall in here, we're going to kind of creep your way in. They, these are this kind of like a rope per se that's going to go down like this into the body. Uh, you know, it, it's turned on the most common exercise our culture is going to recognize with strengthening that is old-fashioned sit-up. Okay, we're trying to keep, the oblique gets turned on most when the spine is in extension. Would you agree with that, Anthony? Okay. Thumbs up. Right on, Anthony, agree. So, when you're, and if, a lot of it is in the thoracic cavity, like I mentioned earlier, your middle back. If you can keep the middle back in extension, like this, as opposed to inflection, like crunching, the oblique works, let's say, it works longer because of that portion of the spine staying in extension, the brain's going to have to pull from that muscle or want to pull or was created to pull from that muscle to move us like that. When you start rounding, we kind of start moving into the rectus abdominal, which is that six pack muscle that everybody loves in the culture. So we, so to get great recruitment in here, you try to stay in extension uh, in that oblique. And there's different ways you can, you can turn on the oblique. I think the, a great way to learn is for Anthony to bring his hands by his sides and we're gonna raise up one leg. So just this, and we're only gonna raise it up like three inches, okay? And in there, we're gonna fire, get fire in all the way through the muscles in the anterior part of, of the leg, but we're gonna kind of get kind of into the obli into that uh, internal oblique a little bit like in, in there, real easy, natural way, you can rest, Anthony. You know, you can progress in different heights of the of the of the leg as far as where you may need to kind of vary in its recruitment and you can also do a double leg variation so anthony will raise both legs up just three inches in there that's gonna uh, get a good turn on from there as well go ahead and place them down uh like basically, i said you're working, basically working small muscles at the same time to keep your overall body because those muscles that we don't know when we're doing an activity or movement can injure real quickly right yeah What's what's come into that would cause that to tear or strain? Oh man, well a lot of people injure their abdominal muscles uh, in daily life from lack of activity. So like let's yeah. say your job requires you to be seated a lot, you know, because I mean every you know electronics are so involved in everything we do now. People sit so many hours a day. The hips are always so tight, Anthony, in here, yeah. and the upper trapezius is so tight now with people because of our posture and everything all the time that. Um, a lot of times when people will go do a daily life activity, like picking up groceries, yeah. you know, people that are like, I'd say about 70 years old and older, you know, uh, that just, you know, they'll, they can injure, do a yard work, you know, is a common one, uh, where people will get, go like down there. patients come in, I just get out of their, out of their office chair, mm. and they, they pull their back because their abdominals are weak. Oh, yeah. They just don't know, because they've been sitting for so long, the muscles are short because of that sitting position. Now the overall body just has given out on it, so now the back has no strength at all. Yeah, Anthony used a really, Anthony used a great uh, descriptive word. He talked, he said shortening. And our posture, your body is always going to gravitate to what it does most, okay? Yeah, yeah. So if you um, are seated a lot, your hip flexors are short a lot, they're going to want to be short a lot, you know? It's going to pull your pelvis in different positions, cause you pain. Okay, so for the abdominal wall, you want to make sure you do have a general understanding of the different pieces of it and how to strengthen them. Okay, so very simple little leg lifts like this. The other one I mentioned was the classic sit up, so we might as well show it, Anthony. So there's two forms of it. One military style where the legs stay straight, so Anthony would just sit up and try to touch those toes 
and go back down. Now here's, a, here's something you want to understand. The position of your arm, right, primarily the humerus, is going to dictate where your brain kind of activates um, the muscles of the trapezius and how it moves the scapula and thus recruits the muscles that move our spine, stabilize the spine, whatever that is. Okay? Yeah. So if you want a greater challenge by getting the thoracic into more extension, the humerus needs to be brought up like this, okay? So you wanna bring both up. So the reason this is, is I'll show you guys from the side. When my arms are like this, my back is more prone to be in this type of posture. But when you bring the humerus up like this, okay, like this, your brain naturally, the scapula goes, what's called, it's called downward rotation. So it's gonna go down. When the scapula goes down, the way that we were created, the muscles in the trapezius push the thoracic spine into extension. So by raising the humerus like this, you will get greater oblique recruitment because the body, you're telling your body to fight to keep that portion of the spine in extension. Okay. Well, you're saying too that actually these muscles here will lengthen when your arms up here, so now you kind of lock them in as a source of your contraction with muscle exercise versus here, now you have other muscles working with it, correct? Yeah, so, so Anthony is describing like synergism. And what that means is when his arms are overhead like this, what's really going on is what's behind us, okay? So because of the position of Anthony's scapula, our shoulder blade, due to the position of his humerus, the upper arm, his scapula is in a particular position. That particular position makes the muscles in the back straighten the spine more, okay? So when you do that, when you spit these muscles in here, like Anthony said, they're gonna get longer like that, okay? And it, essentially what it does is it makes it it makes it more challenging and you can become stronger, but you also have to recognize the risk of injury increases as well anytime you improve, enhance the intensity of an exercise. What we're using here now as resistance is gravitational force. So we have a center of mass in our body, right, this box, and the culture, general population, we call it the core, okay? But there's so much more to that. When you, when in exercise science, you have to learn about the center of mass as like, this is where all, all the, when any, anything that relates to this box in here, right doc, if anything, anytime you move anything away from it like that, it causes more brain activity. Essentially it makes it harder, harder to keep your balance, stability. Uh, mobility becomes, requires greater muscle activation, body control, kinesthetic awareness, coordination, the general term. All that kind of stuff is more challenging. So if I take Anthony's, arms and I move them away from the center of mass, the body has to work harder to move itself con and control itself. Okay? It's almost like the more, the more space you have between your center of mass, the more it's going to basically have to have to have more muscles involved, more coordination, more force, mm -hmm. to get that maintenance center of gravity overall, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really well said. So Anthony leaves his arms back. We get the spine of greater extension, Anthony's gonna sit up. Now when he sits up, I'm gonna tell him to not go to the toes, but to go up and reach up. Go ahead, Anthony. So up here, like this, in here. Okay, go back down. Now, I'm gonna have him do that one more time. Fire it off, Doc. So Doc gets up, bingo like this. Now I'm gonna hold him, so, but I want him to stay here. You see how the spine is straight. Doc's got good genetics in his spine. We're not in here, flex your spine. Like this, okay? Yeah. This is where we start getting into the into the uh, the six pack guys that we talk about, okay? Uh, the, but we are in, in extension. We're getting synergistic involvement here from all the obliques, the transverse, and the rectus, okay? But we are getting more recruitment from from the from the internal oblique in there. So there's a couple good ones yeah. with that as well, okay? Now let's go transverse. Transverse abdominus has got a couple different functions. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Again, if you're a professional, you know. I'm just talking general people right here. This is the muscle that, you know, we got some east and west fibers going on, okay? Because the muscle fibers are going like this and not like this, what do you think your body's gonna do, okay? When your brain turns it on, it's gonna turn you in the direction of the fiber, okay? So these muscles kind of twist the, the spine, like in here, kind of the, primarily the lower part, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of that, they get in there. We have hip rotators as, as well that fire before the transverse abdominals in different movements, generally speaking, right? But once those hips have become rotated like this in here, then these muscles twist your spine, right? Fancy word in kinesthetics, it's called disassociation. One segment of the body is doing something right now, my spine is in here like this, but my hips, 
can see they're in here, right? And that's important for guys like golfers, baseball players, all that kind of stuff. So after these guys go, then we get these guys to kind of follow like that, okay? So how are we gonna strengthen those muscles? A lot of different ways to do that. Uh, let's show them, let's show them like a Russian twist, okay? We'll do something cool like with a ball. So make your way up to the feet now. So, <laughs> Uh, I like the Russian twist for people because it gets uh, it gets a lot of. You want to tilt that up just yeah, of a little bit, Doc. The, the Russian twist is great, man, for 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 everybody, rehabilitative, uh, general fitness, mm -hmm. and athlete. Okay, because I like how it gets the posterior, meaning the back of the muscles of the body, it gets it gets them turned on, you know. And it's good for you know people's coordination and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people's jobs and stuff like that, they don't involve that in their life. So you need to wake their brain up, or else otherwise they end up getting hurt or yep. something. And you know, it's it's good for their overall quality of life. So. What I mean by that is if I get my body out in this position like this, Doc, in here, in, to truly do the exercise properly, in my opinion, you want to turn the muscles on of the back side of the body. So your calf muscles, your hamstring muscles, and primarily the maximus of the glutes, the big part, the big chunk of your butt muscle, okay? Now, anytime you extend the, the, the hips by way of the glutes and you turn the hamstrings on to stabilize the femur, like this, okay? Your lower back muscles, they become engaged, okay? Now, we're not in what's called hyperextension like this, where I'm using my mind to turn on my lower back extensors. My lower back muscles are engaged synergistically because of the involvement of the hamstrings and the glutes. So this is, this is great because it's gonna, it's gonna kind of stabilize my pelvis in here. So depending on where I wanna work in my abdominal wall, dictates what I do with the muscles behind me. If I want to get hip rotation involved, I'm going to get my heels up like this and get, get, get the muscles of my feet to turn on and in my lower leg so I can get my hip muscle, you see my hip muscle, my hip bone, excuse me, turn towards you like that. So in order for my hips to rotate, the rotator has to move it, <laughs> okay? Right. So once we rotate the hips, then we can get into this transverse in here and rotate the spine. If you want less hip rotation, you keep them pinned here like this, and this is where you work, it's kind of more thoracic rotation like this, which is very key for golfers, baseball players, you know, those kind of sport, tennis guys, stuff like that. Rotation. Yeah. But it's also an essential life movement, and you guys need to know that. That's why I have the fitness people do this too. Once I prepare their body to handle the stress, they need to do that. We do it in life all the time unconsciously. So you need to strengthen yourself. You don't have to get loads of weight, man, but you should at least be able to use your mind to function like this with your muscles as far as your existence. Well, you mentioned too, like if, if I'm going to accidentally fall, right? At that point, how do my muscles know how they've been trained to coordinate so I don't cause an injury? Well, that's, that's so important, Anthony. Yeah, that's such a great thing the doctor yeah. said. You know, falls, Anthony's gonna deal with that a little bit more than myself, you know? Yeah. But, but uh, you know, safety and stuff like that. You know, if you fall over and your brain doesn't really know how to work this part of your body, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to try to use another part of your body to save you, so to speak. And it's not we we're, we're not designed to do that. You know, there's a flow to everything. It's you know the meridian well, flow. But I, I never make fun of kids at all. But if you look at like junior high kids, right? And you have ones that have been athletes, that have been trained, like for example, since they're like with Derek, since he was, since he, since he came out of the womb as a baseball player, right? But, but someone who comes and they have, for example, PE, and a kid who's been training his whole life versus a kid who has been training, how's that kid gonna run? Yeah, yeah. That their coordination isn't there, their coordination isn't built in, so over time, if when you train and train enough, your body has good coordination so you prevent injury. You get stronger, and when if you have a situation where you're going to fall, for example, or trip, something happens, you're not going to hurt yourself. Yeah, I mean that's why a lot of people that that are older that get hurt because they now they've become very timid, very limited in their ability to move. Now their body doesn't know how to how to get that quick response time, so they actually can recover from it, from having it. Yeah, that's way to put that. great information. Uh, Generally speaking, you guys, just to summarize real quick, so you guys have a takeaway. Yep. Okay, would be if you want to work the lower the lower spine like that, you want the hips you want the hips to get moving. Okay, uh -huh. uh, let me show them. I'll show them sure. this one real quick. I'll come over here too. Sure. Better angle. 
angle. Okay, so here's a good one, man. Oh, so this, you know, you like this fancy word means supine, just means I'm on my back, laying on your back. Okay? Big words here, Derek. Big yeah, words. So you're gonna work. You're, what we're gonna do is this exercise is gonna involve hip uh, the all the abdominal wall. But when we, what we do is we're gonna bring the the femoris over and bring the the hips into this. We'll say it's internal rotation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from and you want to be like this, but I'm gonna sit up so you guys can see. Me. In my brain, I'm using the right side of my brain to take my left hip, okay, and move it this way. Now, my hip rotators, they're going to get me to probably about, right about here is kind of when they, then they shut off. And then the transverse twists me into the other side where the hip rotator will start and the transverse will twist me back like that. Now, there's different variations of this. You guys notice I have my toes pulled. That just allows for greater movement on the heel, smooths things out. It's nice, more efficient. Then you can kind of go in here where the heels are lifted in your low. You can then start to bring the legs away. Remember the comment I made earlier about the center of mass. Anytime I bring my extremities away from my center of mass or I extend a joint, thus bringing the lower portion of the extremity further, you guys can see the ankle is further away from the center of mass here than it is at the bottom, so thus this is harder. Okay, so, and then you would go all the way to full extension. So I usually will go, I'll knock them out like this. You know, get them up, get them in here, get them three quarters, then you get them in here, this kind of thing. And this is where you would begin to, you know, kind of start knocking stuff out like this. And then you can do all kinds of crazy things, like put uh, external loads between the extremities, attach bands to them. You can move people on balls. And, I mean, there's a there's yeah. hundred things you can do with that. So, anyways, there's, there's some general ones with that, okay? Uh, if you want to get up higher in rotation, you want to you want to kind of pin the hips, like I mentioned. So seated exercise, more thoracic, free flowing on the hip, more lumbar. Okay. All right. Now we're at the ones that everybody wants, right? They're all coming in here. Hey, Derek, you know, give me the six pack, right? Yeah. Man? All right. Everybody wants some, right? And all that, a lot of that to be straight up with you guys. You have to have a certain percentage of body fat to even see those guys. Oh. So you're gonna have to get down to like around 13 or less if you really want to see it. And I'm talking to the males. You're talking about higher body fat or lower? Low body, body fat. fat. So 13 oh, percent or less is gonna kind of allow you to see some of your, yeah. some of your, the, the six pack guys. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then, you know, the lesser, the lesser amount of fat you have between the muscle and the skin, the more exposure the muscle is going to have through the, the skin. In there. there's, there's no thing as a 12 pack then, right? Oh man. Everybody's, I mean, we're all created in very, you know, very similar, but there is unique variations with some men yeah. and women. They, they tend to have, a, it looks like it goes lower. Okay. You know, okay. down in there, yeah, with that. But hey, so let's talk about these. And you know, these, these are all, I'll be honest with you, these muscles are overtrained. The muscles that I talked about earlier are usually undertrained because the culture is very concerned with what with the front of us, our body. But the way we work, man, everybody needs to know this. Primarily, you need to be excellent in, the, in what's going on behind you. Our foundation essentially starts at the muscles in the feet and you need to make sure that the muscles of your feet are well wired, that the, are, the muscles, I believe there's three pieces to the arches and you can train the, the arches of the feet in different ways like that and scientifically uh, back, I mean, especially with athletes, rotational guys, pitchers especially, I, I do these crazy exercises with their feet, you know, like ninja stuff, because, awesome. because if you don't do that, their ability to transfer energy from the ground up, which is the way we do it, it's lessened. So you should do that if you're a trained athlete. And then people are like, well, I don't need that, that stuff, Derek. I just want to, you know, lose weight. And it's like, well, dude, do you want to run farther or yeah. ride the bike further or do more uh, stuff in your training so you can burn more calories and look better faster? Then you need to make sure the primary, the foundation of what you use to achieve all that is pretty good. If the feet yeah. suck, so to speak, right, to put it in the vernacular, if they're friggin' terrible, then the way your body moves energy up it, it's gonna be friggin' terrible too. You're gonna over exasperate, the IT band usually doc over exasperates it, under, under, underdeveloped of the lateral quadricep, then the hips don't fire right because the, the, because the arch ain't right and the body goes inside the hip and the outer hip sucks and then never rotates right and all this stuff, well, you know? And right now too, I, I hear a lot of a few patients that are actually Training for the LA Marathon in May now because of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. How many? What is there a percentage of athletes that train for a marathon that go from say a mile to five miles, ten miles to twenty miles, and how many of those people have injuries? Because they don't worry about their feet, they don't worry about their shoes, they don't worry about the little things we can do, the little things 
to make that long distance run, for example, easier, less painful, less injury. Mm, that's that's awesome advice. The skeleton, like when I did yep. the shoulder, when I did the shoulder eval with Doc, and I looked yeah. at the skeleton. I mean, dude, you know, I tell clients, look, you need to put a seven millimeter lift in your shoes. Sometimes they're like, I, why? I, I don't want that. It makes, it's like it makes them feel um, uh, disabled. Yeah, weird or something like that. It's like, you know, you you're, the reason that you're having injuries is probably because your skeleton isn't mm -hmm. right. And you don't have so to you have to it. fix yeah. that. You know, you got to yeah. correct it. I wear one. You know, so what? I wear two. You got to fix the muscles so they work. They work better like that. Okay. Well, and, and because we're thinking about long term, right? It's not. It's not mile one. It's not the first workout. It's the second, third, or fourth workout. When your body is not coordinated properly, when it's not firing properly, when it's not balanced. Maybe muscle tightness, muscle strength. At that point, you're going to cause long term injury. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have, it's not. I'm not, I'm not even talking about an athlete. Doc does a normal person. Yeah. I mean, right now it's January, right? Yeah. How many people want to start working out? Again? Oh, How many geez. people want to go out there, go for the run, start hitting the weights again? Start doing yoga, start doing whatever sure. it is too. They come and they go, how come everything hurts? Yeah. yeah. And, and not just hurt, but injured. We'll talk about the feet another day. I yep. mean, why don't you go in yep. great detail about yep. the feet? And that, that may yep. sound, you know, crazy, yep. but you know, Doc and I are passionate about, about helping people. That's all it is. It helps people long term. Yeah. So they, so they see the benefit of working out, I think, to where they've done it for three, four months. So they see their actually body change. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's it's very rewarding for the client yeah. and it's fun as the coach to take them from where yeah. they are to where they want to be. It's very fun. Let's talk about the, the, the six pack. Here we go. Okay. So look, the, it's very, it's very challenging to learn this. Okay. And, and people generally, generally speaking, they don't have the patience to do it. Okay. And a lot of times they, they believe they don't have the time, but it, you know, time management is a big thing. I talk about it all the time with people. It's a lot of the times while people, why people are, um, overweight is because they are not managing their time well enough and you know I'm not a perfect person we all have we all have issues like that but because of a time management issue um, their life it can't be organized well enough for them to insert things into it that will help them achieve a weight loss goal so that's one of the things I really enjoy about helping people is getting their schedule on track so so here we go so in in the way these abdominals work is this you got we're gonna call them blocks doc and I were talking about yep. we got three blocks okay two four six okay what you want to try to learn to do with your brain is to get up in the top ones and learn how to turn them on first before you kind of move down into the second row or block and then finally into what we'll just say is the third row or block now like I talked about earlier your brain is gonna send a signal down your spine that correlates with the muscle position on the body so my upper guys my brains gonna shoot it down get to these top guys in here and it's gonna turn them on like this and they have a range of motion before the brain goes into the next segment or block okay and so you want to try to like learn how to just feel the front one and the best way your body works can you tilt that up sure, of course. is this if you want your brain to wire to a muscle well you need to learn how to just squeeze it and hold it initially that's step one after that you need the muscle to be good truly at lengthening but what our culture is obsessed with is shortening the muscles, okay? Yeah. And it's because there's, there, it is kind of like, um, I wouldn't say the final level, but the, it, you do kind of work your way up to what is called the concentric contraction. And that means when the muscle starts in a lengthened position, everybody uses the bicep, and then it's shortened, okay? And it's brought up into a, into a shortened position. And so essentially that is what I'm doing here. But it, your brain will hardwire signals to muscles when they're held for longer periods of time. And it actually gets better at movements if you can truly learn it backwards. As oh, crazy, okay. as, as, crazy okay. as that sounds. So with pitchers, a lot of times I work with pitchers, I have them learn the movement isometrically, meaning I make them go out and hold the, the various positions. Let's say there's like six or seven positions to a pitching motion every coach has got Got his own philosophy on that whatever but you get him out there and you have them hold that position and hardwire the brain to remember all the positions of the body it's no different with your abdominal muscles okay so good tool stability ball you know it allows for the spine to get into a little bit greater range of motion I like that uh, in my professional opinion as long as the person isn't at risk for injury because 
that's how we're created to move. You might as well put it in that position to move. Yeah. People overdo it or injure themselves when they add external loads or they put their body in position on an unstable surface or a surface that allows for greater mobility and they don't put it in a position right because they don't understand the kinesthetics. So that's why you should work with a professional, okay? So when you get in here, you wanna to try to go into little holds. I like five second holds. In my foundation program, one of the first things I teach kids that are five, six, seven, eight years old, or adults who are coming in here, and they're 34 year old entrepreneur guy, 55 year old CEO, whatever, okay? They, they, they I teach them how to hold it. And I teach them the general movement. Now, general crunches is when you bring the tip of the scapula off the ball, okay? That's all you need for a crunch, which it looks, do you see me? Yep. Okay, so it looks like in here, there. My scapula's off, that's it. That is a crunch. Remember what I explained to you guys earlier about the differentiation between uh, rectus and, um, and oblique, okay? If I do a sit-up, I'll show you a sit-up. If I put my arm, let's just use one arm, you know, like this, and I sit up, my spine's straighter. Okay, more in here, outer. But if I get it in, if I get in here like this, uh, or I keep the hands here and I round it like this, it's the body brings itself inward to the front of the body like that. So that's how you train those muscles. There's different ways you can train those muscles too. You know what's a great exercise, Doc? Let's show them this. This is an advanced one. So just so, you guys, just so you guys know, when you, you can do this on the ball and on the floor. Try to work your way up one block at a time. Start with five, sets, uh, five second isometric holds. Don't even add any external loads. An external load is, some, is gravity plus something. Okay, so we have medicine balls, you know, weights, whatever you people put, and then, then the whole center of mass theory, mm -hmm. where if I'm gonna hold it near the center of mass, easier, harder, harder, very hard, whatever you wanna do, okay? Yep. Right. Okay, now, here's an, time, here, right? here, here, it's cool. Here's an advanced exercise I wanna, I wanna show you guys, um, that's just like a challenge, right? So here, try this one out, like this. <laughs> Oh, going to these things. <laughs> yeah, now you don't have to have rings. You guys want to know one of the, how I really felt like I learned this the best was when I had my daughter in a shopping cart, okay, and we're in the grocery store, and daddy's on the back, and you know, I give, I do, you know, make sure nobody's looking around. I do a little run, I hop yeah. up there, and you know, make my daughter laugh like dads do, right? Yep. Okay, so. What I did though was, is I, I got on there and you know, being the exercise wacko like I am, I got up there and I started screwing around with that. And you know what? You can make your abdominals really strong <laughs> by doing that kind of stuff. So <laughs> if, if you get up in here like this. Yeah, so, so basically go get a shopping cart and at that it, point go work on it. Right. That's your workout. I'll show you guys a little bit. Remember, this is an advanced variation. I'll show you a quick one off the table before you go. You can just do it at your house, okay? But let's say, you know, you're, you're a fitness person. You know, I like to show you guys stuff too, you know, so you can get after it a little bit. So what you want to do is, is you want to think to um, push your hands down and round yourself as much as you can. So you can do, let's say I have like, let's say I had like something that was, elevated for me to stand on here to make this easier, which the shopping cart did. You know how they have the little footstool at the bottom that you hop on when we ride the carts, right? Yep. So, but in here, I'm just gonna pop up. So when I'm in here like this, what you do is, is you try to elevate your body with your abdominals. Uh, Watch my arm, my elbow joint's not moving, okay? But I'm gonna crunch myself in there. So my spine goes from being an extension. So here's my spine extension and then I crunch myself in there. And that's, and you can see how my pelvic, my pelvic position shifted what's called posteriorly, like it moved up into my guts, right? Yep. And that's when I get the obliques to turn on. So you can, you can do it where, you know, the reason they turned on is because this, these muscles in my body are strong enough where they can just keep me going and then the synergistic effect of my brain turns these ones on. But if you wanted to try to isolate it, <clears throat> you would just, you know, be more like this, little guys, like that. Yeah, but try to bring your hands in front or behind you, you know, whatever it is you want to try to challenge yourself. Remember the center of math theory. So, Doc, let's show them here on sure. my, here, table. Whatever. Got it. Do 
dinner table in the house, right? You got your dinner table in the house, you can make sure they can see the bed stuff. Yep. Okay, so all you're gonna do is you're just gonna get on here like this, and you're gonna squeeze your stomach and push down. And these muscles will turn on like that. If you wanna make it harder, let them see my feet. You go from being stable to less stable. Oh, okay. In here, like this. The reason that's harder is because your brain is not gonna to wanna, to, it's not gonna to wanna to use them as much, right? Because it could have hurts the toes or, and it's just not as stable as well when, when you're like this. Flat foot versus on your toe, yeah. Yeah, it's not as stable, so you, your body, generally speaking, can't produce as much force. But when we talk about the feet, I'll show you squats you do with on your toes and stuff like that, that Oof. I do with guys to help them sprint faster because the big wow. toe is the last thing to leave the ground. Huh. So anyways, but it's cool. So there's some good ones for you. Real quick, Doc, before we end the show, yep. let's talk about this. Okay. When it comes to your abdominal wall and uh, or abdominals, and yeah. you want to make sure that you are keeping these muscles loose, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So stretching and stuff like that is, is important. When you guys are at your desks all day like this, what do you think is going on with the muscles in the front of your body? Look at my spine. If my spine is in flexion, that means these are shortened, these are lengthened. Right? In order for these to get lengthened, you're going to have to grow the spine up like this to stretch these guys out like that, okay? So, a lot of people, when I assess them, their transverse and obliques are tight. What that does is it screws with your skeleton. It will twist your hips in like this when you stand. Doc knows this stuff. Yep. You know, this is his, his bag. So, we're like, you know, in here, in here like this. Okay, and so you have to, your abdominal, your abdominals and stuff, and your lumbar, and, and uh, the uh, quadratus lumborum, and your hips, and all that jazz, man, it has a big effect. And when that stuff's not right, to be, you know, yep. it screws with your nervous system. It can screw with your vision, your balance, your clarity of thought. It's, that's why things like, you know, like, that's why we have to do physical activity, mm -hmm. and Doc is so valuable, the skeleton. When the skeleton's up, when the muscles are off, it affects the skeleton. When the skeleton's Vice off, it versa, affects yep. your nervous system. Yeah. And things don't work as right, you know? And so it's like, man, you know, it's just, it's very important to be, you know, to be holistic, holistic but to be like. But you have you the know, whole body. The whole not, body. Not just, not just one thing or two things, the whole body. Yeah, has that's to why I talk, your body, your mind, yeah. and where you're at on the spiritual side of things. Remember, that's a personal decision. But yeah. as far as our mind and our our body, they have, they work together, okay? And you, the spine, you know, I'd love to go in great detail about the spine someday, Doc. I mean, Good. I have a ton Good. of knowledge about the spine and how the nervous system, the brain sends signals down it awesome. and a back up through there. I mean, it's 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 pretty incredible how it, how it was created. So well, your, your mental health actually is affected by your, your body's motion. Mm that link there. So if your nerves aren't being fired enough in the right way, yeah. your brain can't function well. Yeah, the spine, I mean, dude, the, seriously. That's, that's fact. The, the doc knows, you know, the, I mean, I'm getting close to 20 year professional now. The longer I'm in it, the more I realize, like, dude, your spine, I mean, like, it has to be excellent. Mm -hmm. It affects your shoulder function. I mean, everything runs through it. You don't, you wanna make sure it is so healthy with that, and a lot of it starts uh, essentially at the bottom, yep. you know, yep. with the feet. So uh, maybe we'll talk about that in the next time. I like that one. Yeah, so anyways, here's a good stretch. If you got a ball, you need to lengthen the guys in the front. Uh, it's good to do a Side couple two. different hip positions. One is low butt, like this, and up in here. This is good for kind of the, the thoracic, the middle back, kind of the, it's what's gonna feel kind of like your middle and upper chunk of your abdominals in there. You can get down into the lower ones and then into the oblique by getting into greater extension where the pelvis goes from being neutral, it goes shifting like this, anterior or forward, okay? When I do that, everything goes back and I'll get lengthened, okay? So now I hang out on these balls every day and help people. So be careful if you're gonna try that on yourself and you fall right down on your backside. It'll be so make sure your body will better stabilize itself <laughs> when there's flexion in the knee, okay? Because the hamstring muscle's primary function is to stabilize your femur. So if you have your knees bent, it'll hold this, this bone still for you. If you get out here like this, you know, where you're in full extension, like this, yeah. you better be careful. You know, you're off to fall like that. Here's another trick is you gotta get the, if you extend your arm on the tight, on the, when I assess people, I'm like, yo, this oblique's tight, here's the trick. Do you go, the side you wanna stretch, you get it straight. 
Uh, this side you get stability through this and you know what's good is you put that foot next to a wall or like a little ball and you tell them to push into it nice. it'll extend these all this stuff here man and it'll get your butt muscle to turn on when your butt turns on your hip goes it lengthens it lengthens and then these muscles because this is longer these get longer so you go like this in here and you push in and then and I put my hand behind their fingertips and I tell them to push into me. I just keep creeping my hand away Perfect. until they exhaust it, right? And then I push hard at them and I'm like, hey, push harder. And then yeah. I take it away and it wakes the brain up and the brain's like, oh, I can go farther. And then yeah. we get greater, greater extension and improved flexibility, okay? So there you go, simple. We talked about twisting ourselves. Here's a quick little twisty stretch. Get yourself uh, into this position like this, and uh, we're gonna, you wanna kind of uh, rotate here. You wanna rotate up. Can you raise that down? Sure. Like this. So the, Go back everybody forward. does these, you know, they're all over TV and the internet and all this jazz. What you wanna do is you gotta get, like I told you here, is you gotta get this guy to lengthen. So you need to get in here and straighten that leg like this, and then use this, these muscles in your, in your, uh, um, Protractor, doc, I'm having a brain fart. Serratus anterior, it moves your scapula like this. You have to turn that on, so you need to push down into the ground. So quadriceps is gonna extend this. You gotta squeeze your butt to extend all these muscles. Then you gotta push down into the ground like this, and then you turn your body. Now, how you do that is you actively use your mind to twist it, and then you get here and you reach up. So it's like you're pushing into the ground like this. Man, it will lengthen those muscles great. It's a great exercise. You can always lay over your ball too. Well, De De Derek, when you're stretching it, how long should you hold the stretch for? Okay, great question, Anthony. I appreciate that. I forget that stuff. It's okay. So, generally speaking, uh, for, for maintenance, uh, 10 seconds is a good number for uh, static type stretching. There's different stretching types. We can go in detail on that in another show. 10 seconds will kind of keep you where you're at. Uh, 20 seconds, will kind of loosen you a little bit more, maybe for a training session. Uh, but I think you need to hold stretches for about up to a minute to really see improvement. Now, the thing about stretching, we can talk another day, but I'll give you a little tidbit, is stretching is about being gentle. It's not about forcing the joint into these stream ranges of motions and like grinding out a stretch like you're doing a bench press rep or something. Not at all. It's about being gentle with yourself, feeling the muscle lengthen and gradually increasing that range of motion through the joint over time. And the greatest quality for flexibility improvement is consistency. Mm -hmm. It's consistency. You need to do it with regularity and stuff like that. So, so there you go. That kind of stuff will help out. I use the word in here with clients. I use the word gentle. Be yeah. gentle with your body and flexibility. You're not going to improve flexibility in a week. Yeah. Just give yourself time. Yeah, it takes time. And then you want to lay over the ball, get some lateral flexion going on like this. So we extend the spine in two different positions. We need to rotate the spine. And then you want to kind of get some lateral flexion uh, in there as well. There's some general movements, stretches, Good. And strengthening exercises that you know you guys can take with you, man, and yeah. apply them to you. I yeah. hope you guys enjoy that. That's good, good stuff right there. I think a lot of it, Derek, is as you kind of wrap everything up too, because we got to get going and you got yeah. other clients to see and celebrities to go talk to and chit chat with, whatever it is too, <laughs> is a lot of it is, is can, we, can, we, can we actually focus our bodies on and coming into 2021, because we're going to be, a lot of us will be home for more, is things we can do, like I said, everything you did right now, it wasn't with complicated equipment. It was your body weight. It was, your, it was maybe using a shopping cart. Go steal from the store. Just leave it here for me. You know, that's a workout tool. How funny you know? is that? Yeah. But can we do things around our, our house instead of consistency on a, and for my sense, a daily basis, because all of us are working from home sometimes on a daily basis, so our body can stay loose, and then from there get looser and stronger, and maybe not have a six pack abs, but work the muscles below that that actually help your body stay healthy. Yeah. And get that coordinate with your brain, with your body, so God forbid you fall back or something like that, you don't cause an injury. Yeah, that's great advice nope. right there. I that's that's what I would do. I love it. Yeah, Anthony's right. You know, just you know, if you know, if we all have different gifts and stuff like that. So let's say you don't you know, some people they don't really like physical activity. I think that people don't like physical activity because they haven't experienced in the way that it was supposed to be. 
the, the culture pushes too much uh, into uh, overly intense and aggressive. But to experience your body through space and time and different movements and functions like that, it's enjoyable. When they do brain measuring activities, you know, the enjoyment is set in portions of our brain, they get ignited. Dopamine. Yeah, through different things. One of them is acquiring knowledge. You know, our brain likes it. That's why we should continuously be learning from the for until the day we die something new, you know? Yeah. And then but physically, our body's chemistry, when you do physical activity, it is it is it likes it. The brain's like, man, I really like this. So there's all different types of things that you can do. But I'll say this professionally, there are essential things that you need to do from a stability, mobility, flexibility, strength, and movement quality standpoint, no matter who you are or what you do, you need to do that. It's how we were created to move, okay? And so you need to make sure that at, that at the bare minimum, your brain understands how to do all of those functions that I just mentioned, those five functions, at every joint in your body. It's kind of like, you know, a stewardship of yourself. Yeah, I think a lot of it is like you said too, our body requires movement. Our body requires movement for health. If you don't have movement, you take that away, chance of injury goes up and up. Oh up. yeah, sure, yeah. So yeah. at that point, either don't, if you don't want to work out, fine, Make sure you have a low deductible and copay and you can see your doctor. <laughs> That's your chiropractor. And you know, people are like, well, I walk. And I'm like, you know what? That's cool, man. Walking is good. It is, walking is, is good. It's a good kinesthetic activity. It works the body through the joints, through multiple functions, requires coordination. It's generally done outside, which is great for us. All this, okay. But there's different things you need to do. A lot of the times they have ankle, knee, and hip pains. Okay. The muscles will naturally want to sometimes become unequal or unbalanced. Mm -hmm. So once you've, you've, you've walked that way for so long, now that can cause more knee injuries. Mm -hmm. The groove of the knee actually gets worn out for one, two hip injuries. So getting checked out by someone like Derek that allows you to regain your balance, at least assess your balance where yeah. you are, where your joints are, allows you to walk injury free, to train injury free. Yeah. We've talked about the other marathon coming up in May too. Get there where you feel you're getting there because you feel good. If, if you're injured, is that, does that make you want to go back? No. So how do we keep ourselves working out so we get that overall benefit chemically, hormonally, and neurologically by getting our body injury free and staying that way, by understanding the basics of health is not just go and lift 5,000 pounds, we have to start at the very fundamentals first and work our way up. Yeah, that, that's, that's good, you know. I mean, yeah. hey, I love everything Docs, Docs just said. You know, I just encourage, encourage everybody to uh, experience your physical self through as many different dynamics uh, as, as you can, you know, and, and hey, it's not in everybody's budget maybe to, to work uh, with a private studio with a specialist or something like that. So what? Go on the internet and learn it, you know? Oh, email me, te uh, email me or hit me up, you know? Uh, man, I'll just, you know, I'll hook you up. I'll give you free stuff. You know, we all have our passions in life. So for me, this is mine and I, I like to help people with it. So, you know, hey, let me help you. But, but take care of yourself. Um, uh, in, in those five areas, I'll repeat them one more time, your stability, your mobility, your flexibility, your strength, and let's say your overall quality of movement. You need to take care of yourself in those ways. You don't got to get nuts and hang on the gymnastics rings or something like that, but you should do something that at least keeps your brain hardwired and keep you, keep you in your physical self, you know, keep you fired. And I think it's, I think it's our fire, fifth or sixth show together. And we walk through certain things and we do this all, all the time. And, and Derek hit me up for this one too. We go by vice versa. We want to help people. Yeah. You know, I just if it's love in it. here or not. And we do want to make sure we get, we're getting people to get results. So we can help one person prevent injuries or feel that, that I want to call it runner's hire or hey, I like this now. I want to be here now. I want, I want to keep my body healthy. I think that's. That says a lot. I think a lot of people get the misconceptions about trainers and stuff like that. They think they're crazy. The reason, the reason that they're usually such passionate people and coaches as well, you know, chiro like chiropractors, people who are involved in bodily sciences, is because you learn so much and go to such a deep level that you truly can help everybody improve their quality of life on some level. I mean, clients, you know, come in here from ages five to like 84 years old, you know, uh, right now and I help them achieve whatever they can imagine in the dream up in their body and I usually say any need or goal that we have we got needs that our body has athletes especially and we all got goals you know bigger stronger faster lose weight I want my butt to look better whatever well, the thing is with Derek he has 20 years of experience so he's yeah. dealt with things 16 that, 16, 16, 16, 16 close to 20. if I average up I'm sorry sure, thank but you. at that point 
he has enough experience to where, okay, what do you need and how do we get you there slowly, yeah. not let's go do a marathon tomorrow. Yeah, as a younger trainer, I'll make myself completely plain. I made mistakes, you know, because you try to you try to train an old, uh, I should say older, you know, I'm almost 40, but you try to train a 65-year-old person, okay, uh, but you're 23 years old. Okay, so it's like, you know, and I have the degree and certifications and everything, but hey man, experience, right? Yeah. Experience, and I, and you know, I enjoy my own physicality, so I like to uh, explore myself and progress myself. Good. So if I'm still growing, that means the clientele, they're growing for sure, you know? I mean, hey, got professional guys, you know, hire me to train their body. We all got our gifts, okay? So it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's fun, you know, do what you're passionate about. Huge, huge. I can yeah. think for anybody. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Dirk, for being yeah. on the show again. This thanks. is episode, I want to say six or seven, whatever it is, too. Cool. We'll see you guys next month because he's going to work something else out. All right, man. Thanks. All right, guys. See you guys later. Yeah, good stuff again.